Hi, and welcome to a little interactive lesson on how to use translations to represent movement. Uh, today I'm going to give you an example of how we can represent movement using an archer as well as his target. So in this scenario, there's actually a couple of different types of movement that happens. First of all, we have the movement of the arrow as it flies from the archer to the target. And we can also set up a, another scenario where maybe the archer actually hits the target here with his first arrow. And you'll have to excuse my makeshift arrow. And then maybe on his second shot, the arrow lands in a different area of the target. I'll represent this with a green one. And possibly his second shot lands in this area. So here we would have a movement from this spot of the target down to this spot of the target. And so when we're setting up these translations for movement in the real world, we have to think of a couple of different things. So I'm actually going to work, uh, first of all, with the translation of the arrows. So again, I'm going to, actually I'll go back to this page, and I'm going to actually pull a grid onto the uh, onto this page here. We represent our translations using the Cartesian plane, so we are going to have to use a Cartesian plane somewhere. So first of all, before we start thinking about the Cartesian plane, we want to actually make sure that we understand what the situation is in the real world. So in this situation, we've got arrow 1 has landed in this area of the target, and arrow 2 has landed here, and I want to represent those uh, that translation with a numerical value. So right now it's hard to give it a numerical value, so that's where we can use the grid. If we overlay our grid, we can easily start to talk about some different movements. Now there's a different, there's a few different ways that you can set up your Cartesian plane. You can set up with the origin on the center of the target. I can set my origin up so that it's on the very first arrow. I can set my origin up so that it's on the second arrow, or I can just set it up so that my whole entire target lands in the first quadrant. So really, the options are, are up to you. You can set them up any way you choose, but you do have to describe what you've done. You've got to make sure that people understand what it is you're trying to do. So I'm actually going to take mine, and I'm going to set my origin up right on the target. Now if I do this, and I zoom in on this a little bit, it's going to show me a few different things. So the first thing that I notice is I've got my first point here. And if I give that some coordinates, I'm going to first of all, I'm going to call it point A. And point A has coordinates of 0 because I am on, I'm on the zero line in my x-axis, and I'm at zero, positive two. So that is my coordinates for A. Now if I want to think of this as an actual movement, I can say that this is a prime, but I'm just going to give this point right here. I'm going to call this B, and point B is at positive 1 in my x value, right here, and at negative 1, 2, 3, negative 3 in my y axis. So if I look at this, now I can actually make a vector. And if you remember back and look back at your notes, when I give a translation vector, I'm going to put it into my square brackets. And it's going to tell me my x movement first and my y movement second. So that's one way of describing this movement. So first of all, I've moved one place positive in the x value, so I can do I can find that in a couple of different ways. I can look at the difference between the numbers, so the difference between 0 and 1 is plus 1, or I can just do the count. Oh, I'm, b is here, a is here. I had to move 1 in the positive direction. So I've got 1, and the y translation is down 5, and I can do that again with the math. 
So to go from positive 2 to negative 3, I had to subtract 5. And again, I can also do that count. I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces down. And that would be a translation vector for how the first arrow and the second arrow differed in their alignment. Now I can also take this and I can do the other problem. So first of all, let me just clear out some of this, these items. And the scenario I'm going to look at now is actually the movement of the arrow itself. So this one gets a little more complicated. And what I have to do is I have to consider where the arrow started, which is going to be at the archer, and where it landed. So again, I would need to have a, a grid in place. And I'm going to think of this as my starting point, and this is my ending point. There's a variety of ways of looking at this. You could think of the tip of the arrow as where it starts. You can think of it as the archer's hand. I'm going to go tip to tip just because that's where it starts, and I'm going to put it to where the tip would enter that target. So I'm going to set this up in this manner, and I'm not going to worry about where my origin is because I need to have my grid a little bit bigger here. So I've changed the size of my grid, and I'm going to take my grid and just put it right to the very back. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about where does that arrow land. So my arrow is going to land, he's a very good archer today, it's going to land dead center. And again, my wonderful arrow feathers, and there's my arrow. And just in order to make sure that I do have the grid in the front, I'll bring that back to the front. So now I have to look at point A, or point, or the first part that everything started from, and everything started from this point right here. And if I gave that a coordinate, I would be negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so negative 8 for my x axis or x value, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, positive 5 in my y value. Now, where it lands is over here, and we'll call that point B. And point B has a value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, positive 7 in the x-axis, and 1, 2, 3, 4, positive 4 in the y-axis. So again, in order to do my translation vector, I need to look at the differences between these values. So I'm going to look at my x-axis first. So here I go from negative 8 to positive 7. I could count them all the way through, not worrying about where they are up and down, but just left to right. Here I'm going to do the math, and so that's going to be a move of positive 15, or moving to the right 15 spots. And if I look at my y values, I've got 5 and 4, it actually goes down 1. So my translation vector in this case is 15, negative 1. Hope this helps, and just remember you can do this with any movements in real life. You may just have to draw the scenario out, and just consider where you have to put the grid. Thank you.